Home. I was finally home. After so much fighting, hiding, licking my wounds, watching comrades die, I finally returned home. The place I vowed to protect. The town I wanted to save. And the people who lived here. Jan. She spoke softly. Something I forgot she could. It's okay, we'll rebuild it. I stared at the smoldering remains of the house. The windows were shattered. Brakes scattered in a pile of rubble. The old oak beams that used to impress with their age now scarred and withering in the rain. After working up some courage, I shouldered my rifle, moved some rubble around, and made it into the backyard. Mud. The same mud I felt in my shoes in Bremerhaven. The same mud I felt in Oldenburg. The same mud that had finally found its way into my very own home. Gone were the bushes and little trees that my mother had so carefully planted. The lush grass my father had toiled over so many summer. Only the chart and broken cherry tree stood vigilant, almost defiantly. I looked down the hills into the valley of the Weserbergland. The endless greenery, the bright blue sky, and the soft breeze carrying the scent of spring, now scorched and laden with the scent of burned flesh. Realizing that I saw so many similar places, all blurring into one another, made me sick. I threw up my MRE, a brown, thick fluid with pieces of Panzerplatten cookies. It mixed with the mud and almost vanished. Marie leaned against my back, no longer barking orders, no longer yelling, no longer shooting violently. Her silence was deafening. Tears welled up inside me, Everything was taken from us. First, they took my freedom, locked me away for my opinions against the state. Then they detained my friends for the same reason. When I was rehabilitated, as they called it, I joined the National Front. Protests were subdued, people detained. It was not long until the violence escalated. Soon, it was brother against brother, father against son, civilian against soldier. The German flag raced against the European stars. Was this what we wanted? Chaos undivided. Bloodshed. Cruel and unrelenting bloodshed. I armed myself with my own guns and was posted in a provo company. Young men were the backbone of it all, of all shapes and sizes. But it wasn't just them. Some women, fed up with the grace of the world, joined as well. That's where I met Marie. She was soft and fair with even hair and skin as white as the virgin snow. In our first conflicts with the Bundeswehr, I was in awe of her beauty, ignorant of her true nature. I expected a frightened girl clutching her rifle and cursing her own stupidity. She was nothing like that. Sie war eine Walküre, eine Schildmaid. I sighed in exhaustion. I looked back over my shoulder 
and saw Marie staring into the black clouds of the sky. Her short, frizzy hair rubbed against my neck as she leaned on me. At that moment, I realized the vile smell coming from the stench carried by the breeze, the bile I puked up, and the cold sweat coming from our clothes, and finally, from ourselves. Noticing that, I started chuckling. What's so funny? Marie asked, looking over her shoulder. <laughs> it's, it's just, I... Uh, I stood up, Marie almost tumbling backwards. But the months of war and crawling around trenches, she quickly regained her balance. I looked back to the ruins and the defined cherry tree and giggled. <laughs> I, I always hated that house, you know. I hated it. It was small and, and cramped. And, and our neighbors were assholes. Jan. She looked at me with a worried look. And the stupid garden. It was always crooked. And... And... My laughter turned to sobbing as tears ran down my face. Hot tears that ran down my dirty beard and eventually onto the muddy ground. And now we're here. And I wish it was back. All of it. The crooked ground, the cramped house. Hell. Even our shitty neighbor. We'll rebuild, you promised me. My gaze wandered from the ruins to the tree. Nothing but devastation. How could we ever hope to rebuild? How could we ever go back to this? For a brief moment, I saw my mother picking the low-hanging cherries, and I could smell the soft sand wafting over. I turned to Marie. She was dirty and grimy like me. We rocked for weeks, since most of the main roads were too dangerous to travel. But I didn't care. I hugged her. Tightly. She gasped for air from my unrelenting grip. But I couldn't let go. All the frustration, all the despair I felt a moment ago, started to wither away, and the warm embrace Marie gave me eased my mind. Slowly, I eased my grip and let her go. I could feel her hands clinging to me for a moment, but then letting go too. I looked at her. Her face was still covered in dirt and blood, she was a field medic, after all. She never got quite accustomed to the smell of cold blood on her clothes. <sighs> You're right. I guess I did promise that. I smiled, genuinely. She brushed my hair out of my face, so tender and motherly. You did, and I hold you to that, you know? So you best not thinking about doing anything stupid. Her smile was so bright. Like a torch illuminating the night sky. My gaze wandered from her bright green eyes that were filled with hope to her soft lips. I couldn't hold back anymore and gently pushed her face into mine. She did not resist. For a love has blossomed on the battlefield. <laughs>